And as we watch this fight, we'll talk about that thing about, you know, fights being more passive, drops being more passive. Although, there is a box fight going on right now, it'll be what we're used to seeing 24-7. One thing we don't see is a third party coming in immediately. We can see people outside this yellow arrow finally tuning in, getting closer. But usually, from other regions, we have an instant response to whenever a shot is fired, from whenever there's a shield crack. And this dirty dox fight is going to be important. Again, this is going to be the first game for all of these guys and this sets the tone that's not what you want to be doing in your first off spawn drop at dirty docks it's a spot where if you win if you feel cool if you feel collected going through the entire day it's just gonna snowball from there and once again, to just hit home as to what this day really means, this is the first taste of what these guys have and to offer as well to the whole region, right? The official broadcast being back sometimes might be an extra level of pressure for all these players. You're going to be seeing missed shots multiple times here from Learned. Could that be a factor? No, at the end of the day, he secures it. And that just gives him a little bit more confidence, a little bit more of a chance to push forward and get his name all the way up top there in the leaderboard. And it's also the first taste these guys get of the early game. The first taste of how people are playing Dirty Docks if they're dropping in certain spots that you're normally used to. And back over towards Pulse on the other side of the map, he gets a quick one. And that's a very useful one because, as you can see in the inventory, already got the heavy sniper. This is a spot that you want to control out of Sweaty that has the agency and henchman loot. And to touch on the format a little bit more, yes. Might even find himself another Elon before I get into that. We're getting to the point where you want to make it past this top 50. This player is not paying attention at all. He's really just trying to get away from the fight. And early on in these games, this is going to happen. I'm guessing that guy has basically no materials to make it out of this. Whew. And that's an easy pickup from Pulse. Makes it four. That's an easy fight to take. He moves right up, looks for it, has the advantage in height most of the time as well, then drops down, already had the advantage in damage. This is going to be an easy wall replace, a quick tack shot, maybe two or three to wrap things up. A little bit messy, but he gets it done, and that's five now, Bala, for Pulse to start moving really fast along this game. And I'm thinking, cause yeah. who lands it? Steamy? It's the knight. Maybe he'll find himself a knighthood in toe as he chases this <laughs> fight. He almost gets right on top of it. I'm not even sure this is the same guy that he's looking for. It might be. He's in the box now, and he will finish it. Camden. Be at the edge. You're going to have to be forced to take fights. Even if you have good damage on it, wastes time and mats. But if you're efficient, just like Lodge is, he can get that quick 180 burst down with the pump and then move on fast with some good loot to boot. You talk about Sway, I'm looking at the fight as well, the prominence of speed, agility, going for mats, not worrying about a second partner, just getting into the box and looking for the finish. Balo, this is what solos are about, and this is what Sway is good at. It's what so many mechanical players built their name off of, and we haven't seen enough of in these team modes because it's more about chemistry and positioning. When it comes to raw finishing out fights in record times, I mean, those are all the different options, right? When you have seven people beside you, if you even just try to peek or edit, rotate. I'm looking at Frosty right now. Not sure why my man's not getting shot. Based up right beside a heavy sniper comes in. Vinla gets stopped in his tracks, but no, he's actually the one to put a stop to this aggressive madness. He holds down his base, but loses a little bit of height. That's bad when you have central zone because it lets you have even less of a chance to get shots all around you. As zone closes in, you can see as well that these guys have the next option available to them as well. So Vinla closes that one up, holds his ground. We'll have some more loot to choose from as well, but this will now only attract even more people like a magnet to zone. What a difficult situation to be on the receiving end of two players. And... Vinla takes great advantage of that, knowing that that guy is getting shot from the other side, instantly sets up the phase trick with the stairs and gets right in to finish things off. And he's going to do it again. There's another player from behind, though. He had the perfect opportunity there. Full piece control. That entire box was owned by him. He had him beside the stairs. And he has to take a moment to back up, make a new box, break the angle of the third party so he can continue on that wall. But... Even another one coming to the mix, that's his sign that he wants to go right back into his base and farm back up a little bit, reassess the situation. And the big decision tree is coming up. Oh, he actually snuck an RPG in through the bottom of that base. He didn't realize the floor was open and that is due to the elevation on this hill. He's going to phase in, box to box, and he does finish it off ceramically. 
It's unbelievable right now. Three eliminations. And I was going to talk about the decision tree in terms of position going forward. I'm curious because we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen a massive solo competition since StreamHack. If you saw, if you watched the FNCS, I know this is back the first time for the official broadcast, but there was plenty of ways to watch them, whether it was a viewing party or watching on your own through player streams, which is still available, by the way. There, there were some tendencies that we saw. I'm wondering, when is it in these open qualifiers that we end up flipping the switch for most of these guys to, to get towards the level that we saw even in FNCS opens last season? Like, the the... It felt like, especially on NA East, every single one of those games was ridiculously stacked. It really did. And he's going to try to get in the box. Yes, he does. He finishes it off. But see, this is the type of thing that you would not have been able to do in the FNCS. I mean, I think it's stacked because of stakes in the format. Right now, they're just... I'm not going to say lessened, but different, right? It's very different on how to get in. Uh, everyone battling for results. We saw it in Europe before. We can see it when we get an NA East leaderboard update too. There's so many people trying to qualify from opens that people having a great game are tied with 200 others having one that's equivalent. So yeah. once again, you need to pop off over and over again. You need to have an excellent result. And ceramically, I'm going to give him a title because every knight has one. He's going to be the phaser right now because not only is he getting into boxes, he is phasing the minds of everyone that he's with because in game two, they're going to be afflicted. They're going to be even more careful on how they play. He is tearing up this lobby. He has a method, and that method is attack over and over again. He won't stop. This You're asking when will the flip switch or when will the switch flip? I don't think it'll happen, and that might be his downfall. You know, uh -huh. 27 points. I know he's been playing really well, but... Oh no, I, at this point. Yeah. I, I was feeling that that was going to happen. He was pushing out of zone. Like he was pushing in the opposite direction because he got a couple beams on someone. I felt like I was watching a, an early version of Unknown Army there, getting a little too carried away, knowing that there's a possible elimination going forward here. Back over towards Vinla, who we did see earlier on. 15 players now in the sixth zone. And he does sneak the RPG in and with the follow up wow. and another one too. Vinla from height. This is perfect for him now. Not only did he just get those two eliminations, but he's on the highest spot, closest to that six zone rotation. That means he might be able to hold this, but with only 36 builds, I might put that into question. I think he might want to use his launch pad, even though it looks good to hold. There's a lot of pressure getting these options to choose between heads or tails, but the coin's landing on both faces. Right now, it's just looking so good for Venla, but that's the one thing about opens, right? These players are so good at immediate decision making. It's the future that sometimes gets clouded due to what I mentioned before, tunnel vision. Still, very good picks. Amazing aim from Venla here. It's all about how he rotates and survives and gets this next portion, which is the placement, which is the end game. With an RPG, with a launch pad, it will be a lot easier for him. He'll have some options that no other players have. That being said, if he gets greedy, if he's doing what he's doing now, that could be his downfall. It's proving to be so good for him so far, though. He's still getting beams. No one's even looking at him. People scared to take height. Vinla, for some reason, just has this lobby free. This has got to be one of the best feelings when you're literally controlling <laughs> everybody's movements. It feels like anybody who has a say on anything, like Kurt, he's like, oh, I'm trying to rotate. No, Vinla dominates. Nobody has challenged him a single time. And he is starting to run low on materials. He hears that grappler instantly looks for it, but cannot find it. Doesn't need to when he has this rocket launcher in his inventory. Ooh, but getting close now to that self rocket yes. that everyone does never want to be in. Now box to box once again, unfortunately beamed down, but then oh. back to back. The two piece for Vinla getting taken out, but eight eliminations, 50 points. What a good run. Nigel now will be the victor and the leader, hopefully, of this lobby. And this was the man we heard down below, the man with Sky's grappler, the man possibly who can take away this entire lobby for himself. Six eliminations, he can pass Vinla and his point threshold. That he could, and he forges another one. My man is filling it with the grappler. It takes a perfect opportunity, but now I think all on wood. A one versus one versus one. And he just reconnects. He has 37 builds. I was wondering if he's going to start running out, but no. I think he might even have some hard materials in the tank. And Ben takes out one, but I think that's the end. As Nigel is going to clean it right up. Eight eliminations, in a sense. The people who, uh, Zeke, are here at the top. Oh. Well, 
right there. In fourth, you've got Faith Sway there. Uh, now, this is... Please keep in mind that NA East is going. We also will have 10 games tomorrow. 